I can start. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Trenoster and Phil Degel. We're going to be streaming uh, Neverwinter Nights. And That's I'm great. looking at a video of myself running really slightly laggy behind me, so it feels a little twitchy. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Um, as you may have figured out by now, uh, we are releasing Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. And the uh, early access for that starts today. We're calling that Head Start. If you purchase the game right now on Beamdog, you can actually help guide development as we move towards a final release. And you should also be able to wishlist the game on Steam very, very shortly. And as we continue through this uh, Head Start program, uh, we're going to have more announcements about what platforms will be on, uh, features, et cetera, et cetera. So today is the first time we're showing off Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. And uh, as Trent mentioned, you've got uh, Trent, you got me, Phil, and off camera we have Jonathan. All of us together are going to be playing some Neverwinter Nights. We're going to be uh, trying out DM mode, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And we're also going to be giving away lots and lots of oh. prizes. Yeah, to get a shirt, you have to uh, kill someone that we tell you to kill. So that's the only way to get a shirt. I'm mostly kidding about that. Mostly. Uh, so... Neverwinter Nights, the big question is, what's enhanced about it? Mm -hmm. Why are we calling it the Enhanced Edition? Well, we've been working on it for, honestly, over a year. We've been working in consultation with a bunch of people from the community. We kind of set up uh, an informal advisory group that we, uh, we brought on board. Uh, as well, we've had a couple members of the original dev team that now work as part of our team. And we've been kind of rolling it forward and looking at the game and, and kind of First, the mandate was kind of fix what's broken. So multiplayer matching was broken, very broken. So we're actually gonna be replacing the whole game spy system with a new system. Another big part of what's enhanced about it is for persistent servers, we're actually gonna have the master authentication server active again. So you'll have your account on a persistent world. It will be your account, it will be secure. There won't be a lot of hacking concerns about that. Although there's always hacking concerns because hackers are really good at what they do. But we will do what we can to make it solid. Um, other things, uh, we added 4K support for the game. We've also gone through and we rebuilt the entire graphics engine in a shader-based system. Whereas historically it was a fixed function pipeline, specifically targeted around kind of uh, early early OpenGL. Basically your, all your hardware Lighting was hardware transform and lighting, so it was really kind of fixed in terms of what the graphics could do. And you'd never kind of get the brightness that you wanted to achieve. But what we've got now is a complete shader-based system. It's accessible, you can get in there, mess with stuff. Way more powerful. We've added a couple post-process effects just to kind of show things. You've also added access, you can get to the depth buffer. So you can do a lot of really interesting kind of post effects. Um, when we get running, I kind of I'll poke in and I'll show you guys some of the effects we've implemented so far. But one of the things I want to kind of call out is this is an announcement of Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. And we're going to be kicking up a limited beta where we bring people in and we work with them to make the game better. But a big part of that is the game's not done. And the game will be done some magical point way down the road because there's so much we can do with Neverwinter. There's so much. It just blows my mind how much. I was in love with the concept when we worked on it the first time, and I'm still in love with the concept today. I really think this kind of idea of a tool set and the democratization of game design, allowing people to make their own adventures, coupled with an online little mini MMO. One of our, Jonathan earlier said, it's like an MMO with just friends. I think there's so much power there. And then you add in the DM client, there's so many things that Neverwinter can do. And the fact that the matching was broken, it hasn't gotten a lot of love lately, we were able to grab that code base, move it forward is just awesome. I'm so excited about it. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be playing a module together. And uh, it's to Air is Human, which is one of the premium modules. So I have logged in. Um, while we're uh, getting set up here, some other stuff I'd like to call out. Native Mac support is back, uh, so it's not broken anymore. Um, Linux support is back on the table. Basically, the game is back to where it used to be. Um, I used to play Neverwinter Nights a whole ton on Persistent Worlds back in the day. 
And uh, to see it in the state that it was in was kind of sad because like there's no way to find games. And if you really, really wanted to find persistent world servers, you had to go to a third party matching service. And it was just a big pain in the butt. So I'm happy to say that um, how multiplayer is going to work is exactly how it used to work. You're going to see a list of all of the uh, servers out there. You'll be able to freely join them. Basically, the Neverwinter experience that you remember, just way, way better. Um, we also have a question about mod compatibility. So Neverwinter Nights is the modules that were produced. That is what the game is. Um, so for us to go in and break compatibility with those mods would have been insane. So the standing order as we work on Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is don't break the galaxy of really, really great content out there that already exists. So we're happy to say that we've maintained mod compatibility with this new version. Um, some community content might need to be updated. We'll have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But our goal is to basically make the lives of modders as easy as possible because those are the people that have kept Neverwinter Nights alive for this long. So one of the things, if you're watching my screen right now, you can see here, I'll just start toggling some, some of the video stuff we've done. So we've added in advanced frame buffer effects. And we've also added in uh, resolution and, U and uh, UI scaling. Because I'm only at 1080p, I can only run the UI scale at one. If I go above 1080 to 1920 by 1200, I can actually do a 2x scale. And on my other computer, my main desktop machine, I'm actually running at 4K and I'm running 3x on the UI. So this fonts are bigger, everything's bigger. You can actually play the game at that resolution. The other thing here, the advanced frame buffer effects, so we've got a high contrast setting, a vibrant setting, and enable depth of field. So here I'll toggle the high contrast off. So what you're seeing here is that Neverwinter by default, because it was a hardware transform and lighting engine, could only go essentially from full texture saturation to complete darkness. So what the vibrance does, or the high contrast does is it actually takes in and expands that dynamic range, essentially remapping the zones. Vibrance goes in and it saturates the colors. Similar process, just a different kind of shader that does that. And this is just us getting started on it. Um, as well, we've added a depth of field. It might be hard to see on the stream, but you can see things in the distance actually fade out a bit. It's actually a pretty cool little concept. So we'll leave all three on because it looks better. And uh, that's definitely the way to play the game. So there's the three of us in here. We've got Jimothy Nice Rando. And Renica Meltaner. Jimothy is actually me. a lady. Jimothy is a lady. It's actually a lady's name. It is? Yes. In, in what culture is Jimothy a lady's name? In a fantasy culture that in she a, comes from. In a fantasy culture. So Neverwinter Nights was built from the ground up with multiplayer in mind, which was sort of in direct contrast to Baldur's Gate, which had just come out before it. And in developing Neverwinter Nights, the idea was, hey, let's fix all of the problems that were encountered in, in developing Baldur's Gate. So the game is very multiplayer focused. Um, when it shipped, you could have a server limit of up to 64 players, which is very much in the territory of small scale MMO. And that was one of my favorite features of Neverwinter Nights was uh, being able to play an MMO without paying for it. At the time, all MMOs were 10 bucks a month. And I really love that kind of concept of Neverwinter being like a, it's an MMO for friends. That's just, it makes so much sense. You get in with a bunch of people you know, you play together, you just have a, a fun and, and non-hostile environment. It's just awesome. Wait, I think we lost Trent. Let's go find him. <laughs> you guys weren't paying attention. No, we were de definitely not. You guys were just sitting there talking. So I am talking to Seeker right now. And I am looking at the dialogue. I found you. So the Seeker is telling us his story. Basically, there was 20 brave companions. They fought with Valor, but 13 of them died. And only seven are left, and only two are still in fighting condition. I'm going to attempt to persuade. I think my barbarian kind of sucks, though, in terms of his persuadability. And I failed, which is not awesome. I'll guilt trip him a bit. I will go to my death if you don't help me 
and uh, he pretty much wants to see me rush to an early death. Awesome. I call this quest thrice damned because of the one who began it, the ones who betrayed it and the ones who paid for it. Listen, man, I understand <laughs> that you have this intense backstory, but if you want us to find those seven guys, you're going to need to get to the point. Uh, so you made a deal with a demon. Okay. And they smuggled the child out that was to be sacrificed to the demon. So the Zent showed up and slaughtered the Baron. Hey, there's a guy just hanging out in this camp here. Jonathan, let's go attack this ox. <laughs> Why do you have to attack an ox? It's innocent. This ox could be anyone's ox. If we attack it, maybe we can tame it. Uh oh, we've got drow. Well, Trent's busy uh, lining up, up a contract for us. We're going Oh, I didn't actually mean to attack it. Well, they don't seem to be mad, so I guess nobody owned this ox. This deer, however, I'm pretty sure no one owns that. Yeah. Oh, I am the worst persuader ever. Okay. Let's pop up the journal. Where are we going, Trent? What's the quest? Um, we're basically going after some drow. I'm taking on the role a of the uh, lovable but not paying attention sidekick. Like Donkey from Shrek, you know? Remember his antics? <laughs> I believe Murphy. you are Donkey from Shrek. That uh, that seems appropriate. All right. We got Ranica. Okay, this way, boys. And Tomar. And, of course, me, Jimothy. Up I can here. cast spells, so I'm pretty cool. Okay, we've got Eamon Gale here. That guy's asleep. Look at him. Stream is looking like poop when you are moving. Maybe a video setting. That is possible. Oh, he's singing. He's not sleeping. All right. Is he guarding the door? I haven't really been paying attention. He seems like the kind of guy we should kill, though. Next time. Okay, we have a problem. How do we get past this door, Trent? You're the party leader. He has opened the door for us. Oh, nice. Well, because we spoke to Seeker. If you were paying attention in the plot, you would have got that. So Yay. for anybody who doesn't know, Neverwinter runs on the third edition Dungeons and Dragons rules. Uh-oh, spider. Why am I sensing poisoning in my near future? Another spider. <coughs> Female Jimothy Rando. Can you use your spells? The spell that I like to call hit with stick. <laughs> I can cast it as many times per day as I want. I find your spell casting to be a bit on the lame side. Hey, there's a corpse over here. Two corpses with potions. I'm going to drink that right away. Oh. Well, you're drinking the potions. I'm being attacked by spiders. You've got it. Ooh, there is a note. I will so, examine the uh, note. You, you need some help over here, Ranica, or what's what's going on? Um, spider. I'm helping the other guy. Come on. Oh dear. Uh, there was a question specifically around whether the tool set would be ported to Linux. Uh, the tool set is still based in uh, Borland C++ Builder, and there is no way to target it to uh, Linux. So tools will still be Windows only. But uh, I think going forward... We want to see if we can migrate some work into the into the actual game engine itself. We'll see how that goes. I don't think we'll ever going to be creating content in there, but I think we'll enhance some of the scriptability. Okay. Does anybody have any health packs or anything? Uh, we have the question of what rule set will the game be running off of. So Neverwinter Nights was built around third edition, and it's going to continue that way. Um, to change the rule set would completely break a whole bunch of different modules. Spider. 
Um, in the future, we can look at enhanced and broader support for different rule sets, but for right now, Neverwinter Nights is a third edition game. Um, interestingly, it's third, not 3.5, because when Neverwinter shipped, it was right in that window uh, between second, or sorry, third and 3.5. Yeah, we were actually part of the third edition D&D announcement, which was one of the first public speaking engagements I'd ever had, which was hilarious because suddenly we get walked into this room. Uh, I'll actually jump back a bit. So we're, we're getting ready to go into the room and this guy's standing outside and he's like, do you want your third edition or your D&D t-shirt? I'm like, yeah. And somebody asked, what sizes do you have? And he said, large and extra large because D&D fans don't come in any other size. I thought it was hilarious. So we got in there. I sat down behind the, behind the scenes, behind the stage. And the guy comes in and he gets us. I walk out with the uh, director of design, James Olen. And... We walk out onto the stage and there's this couch there. And there are thousands of people in this auditorium for the third edition announcement and for the Neverwinter announce. And it's, it was just insane. So many people and it was hot and sweaty and there was so much energy in the room, so much excitement. It was just probably one of those, one of those moments you look back on 10 years down the road and you're like, I can't believe I actually was able to speak and function as a human being. So I need to add some special abilities. Oops. Assign. When in doubt, assign Barbarian Rage. So uh, because Neverwinter was designed to be a social game that you play with other people, those are sorts of fun uh, little emotes that you can do. So if you right click on your character, go to the upper left and go to emote, you can do little things like goodbye. What else we got? Greet. Hello. I'm going to threaten you. Threaten. Um, is a question about multiple core support. So the original game wasn't very processor friendly. It's a little more processor friendly right now, but you're still going to see it totally saturate one core because that's how the majority of it's going to run. Um, I think that's something we can look at going forward, but... I don't think we want to put a ton of effort into to specifically multi-threading the client. I think more might be more payoff on the server side. Is it going to have 64-bit support? Yes, uh, we are going to port the game to 64-bit. Um, our roadmap for the game makes that a requirement, so you'll be seeing that eventually. Yeah, at some point, we'll probably post up a roadmap on kind of what main features. Uh-oh. Are all the expansions included? Yes. So everything that you get in the... Oh, dang it. There's a... Uh, Way to go. Can, running around the corner. Wave, and Wave. Run away. Okay. Hide. Hide. Just get out of there. Okay. Now ambush them. Ambush them around the corner. Come okay. on, you guys. Ambush. <laughs> Why is this like Listen, my pen and paper Listen, I see a group? guy in armor. His name is Assassin. Bugging off and running away. My brave, first thought brave, is he's Robin. probably going to take more than one hit to kill. Well, well done, Jimothy. Well done. We see your cowardly ways. Um, one of the questions was what expansions are included. So everything that was in the Diamond Edition is included in the base game now. Um, and that also, uh, we're also putting up the Yikes. soundtracks and the premium modules. Drum age. That previously were not available for purchase, up for sale again. Priestess. Um, they used to be in the Bioware uh, premium module store, but that got shut down. So for a long time, there was no way to actually get these uh, modules legally. So we're fixing that. Um, we're also going to be releasing the premium module soundtracks as well for the first time. Um, so we're basically just trying to make it the best possible version of Neverwinter that just comes with as much stuff as possible. Ah, uh, my guy's in a funk. Man, these uh, these drow are a lot less. I am scary decreased than I had been led across to the board. I think I'm in need of some rest. What do we got? Let's rest. Oh, we can't. There's enemies nearby. Yeah. Two gold. All right. Drow well, aren't quite as wealthy as they were. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So before we go in here, let's uh, let's back up. Uh, this looks like yeah. a fairly big room where I think we can maybe hide out in the back corner and rest. But I wanted to give people some t-shirts. No, people don't want t-shirts. Is that true? Do people not want t-shirts? Nobody wants a t-shirt. Nobody wants this is what you're saying? 
So if I understand correctly, Trent is the reason that two people <laughs> in the chat right now are not going to receive this beautiful Neverwinter Nights hey, t-shirt hey. the size of their choosing. I don't want that on me. Well, in that case, we're going to take a quick break here to give away some stuff. So, Dan, if you could uh, be so kind as to paste two names from the Twitch chat, and we will give those two people some swag. So I see a couple questions. Um, can we still import portraits? Yeah, we're not going to change that. Um, Kind of our whole philosophy on Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is to make it bigger and better and not to reduce functionality in any way. So we're always going to try and make things bigger, better, easier to play with. Um, next question, system requirements. System requirements are going to go up because you can't buy that kind of machine anymore. It just doesn't exist. And uh, if you wanted your GeForce 2, it's not going to not going to work very well hey i ran i actually ran the game on a geforce 4 mx which is like a step down from a regular geforce 2 and the i'm pretty sure that if you could get your hand get your hands on a, on a geforce 4 mx the game would probably run on it yeah since we're staying with kind of the existing art level i don't think we're going to be very heavy in terms of requirements down the road when we start adding new content That'll be when requirements start to go up. Let's just say that if you have a machine that it doesn't run on, I will be extremely interested to know, A, what it is, and B, why you haven't gotten a new one in 20 years. Yeah, it feels, feels really encouraging you to get that 4K monitor and pull your GeForce 2 out of storage. If you roll in with a GeForce 2, I will buy you a new video card. I am paralyzed. All right, so we're stuck here. So the T-shirts... Um, the, uh, the right, contest yeah, had been held. One t-shirt goes to Twitchagore, which is awesome. And, uh, the other goes to Malcolm the Griffin. So hook up with Dan. We'll get your address and stuff. And, uh, we'll, we'll mail those out to you because they're, they're, they're pretty awesome t-shirts. I'm, I'm a big fan. Even though I have a third eye going on in my chest now. One guy was like, hey, is that the eye of Sauron? And then I slapped him in his face. It's better than the eye of Sauron. That's right. It's the eye of Neverwinter. It is. Okay, so this door is very clearly locked, and I don't think any number of us attempting to open it is going to change Did that. we? Did we find any, any bodies? Uh, no, you know what? We need to go to the north. We need to go this way. I'll, I will follow you. Phil. Follow me, boys. Jimothy leads the way. So one of the biggest things about Neverwinter that makes it awesome, besides being basically like a mini MMO that you can play with your friends, is having a DM client and okay. being able to jump in and actually actively control and modify the adventure while, while your friends are playing. So what I'm going to do is get Phil, as opposed to running ahead of us and triggering all the enemies so they come ambush us, I'll get Phil to bop out and then we'll get him to jump in as the DM. Now, anybody who's played with the DM, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, if you if you haven't played with the DM, it's kind of hilarious the things you can do. You can do some amazing storytelling options, and uh, just a huge variety of of tweaks and and really modifying the gameplay to make it more enjoyable for the people who are actually in your game. So, as we set this up, I'm going to tell my DM client story. So I played Neverwinter Nights back when it first came out, sort of, kind of. So at the time, I was a foolish youth, and I was running Linux on my main computer, which don't do that. You don't have anything to prove. Um, so Neverwinter Nights was coming out, and it was advertised as like, holy crap, it's one of the first big games that's going to launch on Linux and Mac and Windows. And so I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited. I can't wait. So Neverwinter Nights launches. It took you six months to ship the Linux binary for that game, and I was livid the whole time. Refresh, refresh, refresh. I blame Howard. I mean, you shouldn't feel too bad, because like, I pirated the hell out of this game. But, you, you know, I was justified. No, you weren't justified. You were a jackass. So in the end, I had to scrounge up a valid key instead of just pirating it. And I started playing on these Persistent World servers, which were awesome, because it was like having a little mini MMO. And some of the absolute most memorable gameplay experiences I've ever had was when a DM would join the server and take everyone on the server on this like custom handcrafted adventure. And sometimes the DMs would just like screw up, like ah, I accidentally clicked the button that teleports everyone on the server to where I am. So I guess we're having an event now. 
So that's the kind of stuff that to me made Neverwinter really, really memorable and awesome. Um, I remember once, so everyone on the server, there was like 20 of us, we got teleported to the depths of this horrible dungeon. And then the DM was like, well, you guys are all here. Collectively, you should be strong enough to survive. So I'll just let you guys sort out a way out on your own. And they did, and it was awesome. All right, I'm in as the, uh, the DM client now. So I'm going to sneak up on these guys. So they can't see me, but I'm actually in the same room as them ah, right now. Bloody hell, drow, assassins. Oh, always kill the mage. Always kill the mage. Bloody hell. You summoned a dire wolf. Oh, always kill the mage. Oh, it's Phil. You dickbag. <laughs> so one of the things you can do as a DM is you can possess monsters. I wondered why the drow ran away. No, kill it, kill it, kill it. You'll never catch me. Do you have a missile weapon? Oh, bloody hell. So Phil could actually target... <laughs> Toggle himself invulnerable at that moment if he wanted. I'm going to kill you. You're going to try. Ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> right, well. I love it. So one of the questions was around the tool set and the stability. And we have recompiled the tool set for uh, PC. We've done some testing on it. Um, so far, we're pretty happy with the, with the stability of it. I think one of the big things we want to do with the beta program is get more people poking it and seeing what can happen. So another thing that you can do in DM mode is you can create creatures. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm level five, dude, and you, you spawn in a, a dragon. Nice. Here, let me cast a spell on you. Um, a heal would be good. Oh. I would I would totally take a heal. I wouldn't go that far. Let's see. I'm kind of rusty at my uh, my DM client, so let's see. No, I can make the dragon run around. I can do well, a you, little you jaunty thing. Possessed him, and you can basically play as the dragon. Well, uh, one of the out. questions was I mentioned director's cut a while back. What is it? Uh, it is nothing. So once upon a time, I said. You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to do a director's cut of the original campaign. And I'd like to go in there and, and basically cut half of the redundant content that was kind of like padding. I think with Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, we're not looking back, we're looking forward. And I think a big part of looking forward is focusing on what do we add to the game? What do we make better? How do we make it an even better experience? The original campaign is the original campaign. I don't want to go back and, and try to rewrite history because it's, it'd be a, a ton of work and it'd be kind of a limited payoff. What we really want to do is look at this as a platform going forward and how to make it awesome. Uh, there was another question about adding stuff as feats or spells. I think going forward, I mean, we look at it as, as a platform. There's, there's a lot of things we still could do to the game and a lot of, a lot of room for it to go. Uh, another question was engine bugs. Did we work to solve engine bugs like the server kill issue when you stack or unstack something? Uh, we've been working a lot with the community members on our advisory board. A couple of them are pretty heavily involved in the persistent world side. And uh, Niv has been amazing. Liareth has been a big help. We've gone through as many of the server side bugs and as many of the persistent world bugs as we can. And uh, it's, it's improved a lot. But again, this is why we do a beta and not a launch. We won't know how great it is until we can get it to a whole bunch of people on a whole bunch of different machines so they can test it out. Uh, it was a question mark, a question of new expansions, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, at this time, we're not really ready to talk about expansions. I mean, long term, we've, of course, we want to add on to what the game is. Uh, borderless windows. Now, I'm assuming that means, 
I'm not actually sure what that means. Borderless window is running a window, but turn off the uh, operating system GUI. Um, yeah, which I'm so currently doing. So um, I don't know if it's exposed directly as an option right now, but it's absolutely something that we can look into. I encourage everybody um, check out the Beamdog Neverwinter Nights forums because that's where we're going to be sort of drawing all of our uh, requests from the community from. So that's where we want to get people talking about what do you want to see in the engine? Can we get a consensus about what features would make sense to be put in next? Uh, are you adding Drow? Drow are actually in the game, technically. There's nothing stopping yeah. you from creating a Drow character. Uh, there's another question about why is it hard to make it with three and a half or fifth edition rules? So in Neverwinter, when we, when we made the original game, we were pretty aggressive about hard coding the third edition D&D rules. Part of the goal there was to make it a really solid third edition experience. Now, one of the great things about hard coding stuff is that you can start to unhard code stuff as we kind of progress. We don't have any really firm plans about things we're going to do, but we generally have a goal of opening things up a little more. Um, another question is, will there be a new master server and will it be backwards compatible with original Neverwinter CD keys? Yes, there is a new master server and you actually get a new CD key with the enhanced edition that we're going to use to identify you on those persistent worlds that you play. And, uh, another question, will these changes allow for higher quality graphical update hacks? It's a shader based renderer. The shaders are, are. You can plop new shaders in override. You're going to be able to do pretty much anything you want to, including crush the frame rate down to non-functional. So I, I kind of view it as it's almost like an experiment. We've got some high payoff stuff that's not going to cost us a ton of frame rate that we can implement to make the game look a lot better. And then we've even got more stuff down the road that will start to impact frame rate. And then another part of that is like these models the, the actual art source is in some cases 15 years old. We can be replace it that with high quality art. It'll look so much better. And there's the existing way of doing things in the Neverwinter framework, which we don't want to mess with. What we do want to do is add to it and enhance it. So I've been ignoring the guys who are playing and they're getting bored standing around. I think uh, Phil is just spinning in a circle. Uh, one of the questions is, are we planning to port to mobile like previous uh, enhanced editions? We don't have any news on that right now. Um, it's obviously an idea that we're very, very interested in, but we don't have anything to say about it right this second. Um, how does what we're seeing compared to what you anticipate for the finished product? Um, that depends. It really depends on what the community is wanting to see, um, what they expect. In terms of visual fidelity, like if you're asking, are, are all, all the models and textures going to be replaced? To do that would pretty heavily break um, a significant number of user-created modules out there. So that's something that we've actually backed away from. Now, the system changes that we've made to the underlying framework will let us do really incredible things. Um, as Trent was saying, we have proper shader support now. We can load much better models. So modders will be able to do some pretty intense things. I really things wish that they Phil had couldn't. stayed as the DM. I am the DM. <laughs> well, you allowed me to die. Oh, you're not dead. Oh, Can, you are dead, but you're I am way, dead. way over there. Can you jump me to you? I suppose I could. Jump to DM. Wait, how do you do that? There. Thank you. See, this game is a lot easier when you have an omnipotent god helping you out. Jesus, where are you guys? Get up. Get up and fight. <laughs> As always, Phil is the cheaty Von Chidi. So, did you answer the question about uh, how does what we're seeing compare to the the, an the anticipated right, final so project. Overall, we're not going to massively overhaul the visuals because, as we mentioned, that would break a lot of user created Holy. content that's out there now. But Holy. you can create some pretty incredible things, and any uh, expansion content that we create, we can do uh, visuals that drastically exceed what you see in Everwinter Nights right now. And I think a big part of that is just allowing 
for all the things that people want to do. Like going in and being able to mod the game and and, and really make it that much better. Like there's so much power in the modding tools that a lot of people just haven't had the time to explore. And one of the big things with Neverwinter is it was actually used by a lot of universities and, and colleges, specifically teaching game development, game design. And that's one of the things I'm kind of really excited about going forward. I actually spoke at MIT to a group of students who had used Neverwinter to build essentially almost like a, a, a computerized version of telephone based on kind of the Civil War era. And it was... Um, it's basically studying kind of rumor propagation in a virtual environment. It's a really cool experiment. So, uh, Phil, since you're the DM, um, I, could you use a little bit of a, I could use a little heal right now All before right. we go fighting anything. Okay, well, if I'm going to heal you, then you have to work for it. So, enjoy. Uh, so, there, uh, thanks, Phil. So there's a question about available languages. Um, it's going to support all the initial languages that everyone are shipped with. Uh, right now, it's English only because that's the beta build that we've kind of deployed. Uh, there's a question, what's the difference between the standard and the deluxe versions? The deluxe version really includes the premium modules that Bioware made back in the day. Also includes the soundtrack. So that's kind of the main difference. It includes kind of those optional things that... So some people will add a lot of value to the game. Ooh, chest. Shiny. Uh, easier ways of creating custom content. It's creating new mod, mod, uh, new models, specifically art. Trent, I think, uh, I think Jonathan needs help over here. Um, I'm, I'm just going to ignore Jonathan and run away because obviously you've set up a, a very... Very bad This scenario. is actually part of the module. I didn't do this. <laughs> I'm sure it was the orc ambush of doom. This is the part where the orcs attack. Do you remember <laughs> Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings? It was inspired by this section of this module. Um, I have multiple arrows sticking out of me, dude. Guys, come on. Get up. I'm going to just wait for help. You can do, I, I've resurrected you. You're fine. Yeah, I'm fine until I die again. Uh, so, so sorry, back to the custom content. Um, the Neverwinter tools were based around a Max plugin. So I wrote the original version of the Max plugin, and then it was later rewritten in uh, Max script. So what we'll be doing is we'll be sharing a version of that out with people so that you can use the tools yourself. Ooh, potion of cure late wounds. Um, the other thing we're going to be looking at going forward is we're going to be wanting to make new content. So we're actually going to be addressing kind of what's the tool flow. What's, how do you get content into the game? That's something we're very interested in kind of marching forward. Again, at this moment, we have no like firm plans on, on what that's going to be. I think part of it is really a goal to, to not make a bunch of arbitrary decisions on what's right and what's wrong, but to really kind of involve the community and say, okay, Based on the game, what tools do you guys use? What tools do we want to use? Uh, will we be backporting features from subsequent iterations of Aurora, like Odyssey and Electron? Oh, God, Phil. <laughs> Phil is drunk with the spawn. Spawn enemies. It's You're one so thing close I to death, Trent. No! <laughs> I wonder why, Phil. I wonder why. Up. Up, I say. Fight. Thanks for bringing me back from the dead. Uh, will we be backporting features from uh, the Odyssey and Electron? We've actually kind of gone past that already. So the KOTOR engine was was still kind of fixed function-ish. It didn't really implement a lot of shaders and the, the Jade Empire tech was pretty limited in terms of what it did. We've kind of already gone, in some ways we haven't gone as far as Jade Empire yet but I think those are things we definitely can do. And I mean, our goal is that this is, this is going to be a platform going forward. We're going to make everything that's in here better and allow for the creation of even better content going forward. All right. Well, uh, now that we've had the fireside chat with Trent, I think it's time to give people some 
with more swag. As soon as you guys complete your new quest of guiding this nobleman, or commoner, I should say, out of the caverns. There was a commoner. We had to guide it's him out. me. I came up with this whole quest for you <laughs> with all the orcs, and then you saved him. <laughs> and now he's like, help me get out of this cave. Dude, I'm going to kill the mistress. I don't know where she is. She's up over here. The door well, that we couldn't fine. open. Fine, the other guy will help me. The door that I... Totally ignore him, Jonathan. Oh, he's forgot. miles away. He's the DM. I'm going to teleport to him. I have opened the door. Oh. That was locked. There should be a boy somewhere. Where's the boy? Wait, okay, hold on. I'll create a boy for you. No, I don't want you to create a boy. <laughs> I want to actually find the real boy. Uh oh, more drow. You know, Phil, you're only useful when you're healing or respawning me from the dead. That's hurtful. All right. I have become a shopkeeper, so I will sell you things to keep so, you alive. So, Phil, you were going to give away a couple t-shirts? All right, that. I believe we have a couple winners. All right. So the winners of these beautiful Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition t-shirts are, are you ready? Yeah, Yeti, you win one, and D-O-T-T -T Bat. Dot bats, you also win one. Two so more shirts. One of the things, Phil, show off the back. It's got the beam dog exclamation, which means that wherever you go, people will be walking up to you and asking you, What's my quest? What should I do next? So some guy rolls up to you and hucks down a sack of twenty like eyeballs. Mm -hmm. That probably had something to do with it. Yeah. So at that point you give him all the money you have and you walk away fairly briskly. Because there's no telling what he did to get those eyeballs. Uh, so have you uh, completed the quest yet, or are you just wandering aimlessly um, in the darkness? <laughs> the answer is a bit of both. So there's a deep cavern up ahead. I'm going to take a look here because I see a chest first, though. Oh, great, spider. I am dead. Oh, you want me to do something about that? <laughs> I want you to... You know, most DMs would be like, well, I guess you're going to have to roll a new character. I'm going to wait for help. I'm waiting. Oh, look at that. Help has come. So it's it's okay to suck at the game when Phil is present as a DM. I have dealt with your spider minions. <laughs> I will not be so easy. Uh-oh. Weapon ineffective. This is bad. This is bad. Running away. Oh, so much for running away and buggering off. All right. We're going to take a short break here. We'll be back in five minutes, and uh, we're going to swap it up. So Jonathan's going to hop on here and play, and I.
buddy so, welcome so back Phil's to the stream right. everybody um we're just kind of watching phil and tommy undergallows just popped in and there is a spider queen spider that is attacking tommy although tommy seems to be doing really well let's examine that spider it's hostile and it's impossible and Tommy is impossible as well. He's probably like level 15. Oh, he's kicking my butt. <laughs> so we're basically sports commentators now. For I Dungeons see. And Dragons. <laughs> we are. We are. And here we see Tommy Undergallows beating up the spider, which is actually the DM Phil, who is hissing at him. So Tommy's barely injured. Obviously, Phil didn't pay attention when he imported him that uh, Tommy's a level 15 character. Uh, but Phil is is a queen spider, so we're just going to add a little sauce to the mug. Okay, back on the adventure. So are we chasing down the spider? Uh, let's ignore the spider for now. Okay, and I think this chest is empty. So. Rescue the air. Okay, I think I know where we have to go. Down here on the map, to the deep caverns. Onward to the deep caverns, my friend. So again, Phil is kind of playing the DM as we go along. So he's able to jump in, tweak our game while we're, while we're going along. He can be invisible. He can manifest. There's a, a thousand things he can do. So way back in, in the development of Neverwinter, we actually had uh, Mark Dara of Dragon Age fame as the... Uh, he was the lead developer on the DM mode. In some ways, it was kind of hilarious because we just kind of went, ah, Mark, yeah, DM mode, we need that. And we gave him some rough sketches on what we kind of wanted, and he went hard. I'm down. Why would you let yourself? I was trying to save everybody else. I am stunned in some way. I am unable to attack the Draw Priestess. Why am I unable to attack the Draw Priestess? Uh, she just cast uh, oh, was... Will Save versus Mind Spell. Drat. Okay, we are attacking here. Um, so, well, one of the questions that has popped up is Gog. So, GOG, good, good old games. Um, yeah, we like the Gog guys. We've known them for quite a while. We, uh, we think they're rather spiffy fellows. And uh, we'll be bringing Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition to Gog. As soon as we're ready with a releasable version of that. For now, I mean, we're just going to run the beta on Neverwinter. So we have a direct channel with all the all the users. And, uh, oh boy, zombies. <clears throat> and we really want to kind of engage with the community and push things back and forth in terms of messaging and, and really kind of coming up with a good plan and, and just marching it forward. So... If you go into the Beamdog forums, there is now a Neverwinter Nights section there. We'll be posting up a link to it, but uh, that's kind of going to be the main point of contact with the community and with people who are playing the game. It should be a lot of fun. I guess so, the other key point is the community side of things. You know, so on the Beamdog forum side of things, the more feedback we get from the community, this game is only going to be as good as the community behind it. And we want as much community feedback in terms of pushing us to basically support and improve this platform going forward. You coming down to the deep caverns there, Jonathan? Is it scary? Uh, so the question is, how do we join the beta? Well, the beta is going to be, people are going to be selected from pre-orders on Beamdog. Our goal is to try and get in as many people as we can so that we can test things adequately, hit a good variety of hardware, and do some experimentation. There's a dog down it's in the dungeon. Friendly. That is cute. I always wanted a bit dog. Is Timmy in the well? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I think you Come found on, Timmy. Let's go, boy. Let's go. Hey, Timmy. <laughs> hey, Timmy. Oh, God. Friendly that's, dog. That's dark, friendly <laughs> dog. Very dark. Uh, we should have had a thief. That way I wouldn't be stunned all the time. So... We haven't talked about it too much, but the uh, the development team has a couple of Neverwinter vets on it. Um, me being one of them, uh, 
Secondly, we have uh, Mark Brockington, or as we call him internally, Doc Brock. Uh, Mark was the original developer for all the multiplayer, the AI. He actually wrote the scripting language. Basically, if there's some code in Neverwinter, chances are Mark has either touched it or told somebody how it likes to be touched. Um, the other person, Jason Knight. Jason Knight was the lead graphics programmer at Bioware during the development of Neverwinter Nights. And I believe his comment was, there's nothing quite so humbling as going back and seeing your own code from 15 years ago. <laughs> Jason's been having a lot of fun kind of going back, taking a look, readdressing the way things are, and really kind of stepping it forward. <laughs> I'm Poochie, the rocking dog. Uh, will the Enhanced Edition come with a level editor or dungeon making tool? Yes. We're going to ship with the Neverwinter tool set, which allows you to make all your own adventures and do all the things you want. Uh, Melorious. Now, what is a Melorious? Let's go see. Oh, that is a Melorious. We got Drow. Could use some help. Always kill the mage. I hate it when they turn invisible. Um, there's a question. Can we get those t-shirts available for purchase? I would buy two or three in a heartbeat. Sadly, we can only do merchandise, or we can only do the t-shirts the and such for promotional. So there is no way to buy them. Uh, we must kill Basada. The other thing that I wanted to mention as well is so your save from 15 years ago when you stopped playing the game still works today as well. Um, that's one of the things, kind of our philosophy going forward, is we're not breaking existing modules, people's hack packs, or anything like that. If you have an old save, bring it in and it runs just fine. So there's a question of can I play? There's the sound I get it. <clears throat> oh. I see her. Going, going for it. Woof. Go dog. Go friendly dog. You're in the way, friendly dog. Ouch. Murder. Uh, will people from Diamond Edition be able to play with the Enhanced Edition? Now, because the code is going to be changing a fair bit, especially around the, the matching service, um, it, the Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition won't be compatible with the older version of the game. And One of includes, the big reasons is just security fixes. We've taken a lot, a lot of steps in terms of making the multiplayer a lot more secure, specifically trying to make the experience for online and persistent worlds a lot better. And master server side of things. Yeah. One of the questions comes, uh, are we going to make it easier to download and install custom hack files? I mean, we've talked about things we could do there. I think that's kind of longer term down the road. We haven't made any hard decisions on that yet. It's possible. It partially comes down to with hack files, it's kind of optional content. And the last thing you really want to do is to force somebody to get that content. So it's an option. It's something we're going to have to think about. I think no matter what, there will be kind of, if, if we went down that road, we'd offer you a pop-up. Do you want to download this content? Yes, no. Kid is booking. There's a chest there I still want to get. Seven gold. Was that worth it? Uh, he's never going home. <laughs> Why do I think I sense the hand of Phil in the little boy now? And the dog is just hanging out. Um... Another question was Steam Workshop support. Uh, we haven't committed to anything right now, but Workshop is one of the things we're kind of looking at as, a, as kind of a, a forward-looking feature for it. Why are you fighting the dog? Like, what did the dog ever do to you? He was friendly dog. He ate his friend Timmy. I thought oh, we established right, that right. earlier. He ate Timmy, I guess. So there's another question is, what is the main goal of this enhanced edition? Well, the main goal is to fix a broken game that I think is brilliant. 
And after fixing it, we're going to make it better. We're just going to continue to enhance it, march it forward. Like with the enhanced edition of the Baldur's Gate series, I mean, we shipped Baldur's Gate enhanced edition over four years ago. And we're actually still making active changes to the code base and patching it going forward. And the game is just getting better as we go. We brought it to new platforms. We've fixed bugs. We've, we've done user interface improvements to so many things to make it better. And I guess that's really kind of the goal with Neverwinter Nights, to take a brilliant game and to bring it back into functionality and then to kind of carry it forward as much as we can. The other side of that is also just kind of, we've talked about this around the office a fair bit, is Neverwinter's kind of like that original Minecraft. It's where someone can get in there, they can tweak, they can build stuff, but what makes this better is they can share the content with their friends pretty easily because everyone already has the same content with their install, and you're just sharing that small level file that pretty much enables everyone else to come in, join your game, and basically share your stories. And that's one of those things that Neverwinter has always been there for the last 15 years, and we just kind of want to bring that more into the Minecraft generation. So Melorius has claimed that he has Q powers, and he said, watch this. Obviously, I sense the hand of Phil. John Delancey is with us. <laughs> I can create and destroy with the power of the gods. So apparently, little Melorius is dropping in people on spikes. Because I think he's a, he's a bit of a twisted little boy. I think there was a Twilight Zone episode about this. I think so. Now there's a whole bunch of Star Trek references. So I know for sure this is Phil. Uh, what kind of DLC will there be for the game? So we're going to be rolling out the original uh, premium modules as DLC to start off. Um, as far as future DLC, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I mean... So the premium modules are Infinite Dungeons. Yep. Uh, Wyvern Crown of Cormier. And last but not least, Infinite Dungeons. Yeah. Um, next question. Increase multi-class limit to four. You know, I don't know about that one. We'll have to go back and take a look at it. I honestly can't say. I mean, if you need four classes, I think you're taking jack of all trades pretty far. Ha, the adventure does not have to end once you have finished Baldur's Gate 2. Neverwinter allow, Knights allows you to import your character from Baldur's Gate 2. Is this on the table? No, this is not on the table. Second edition D&D and third edition D&D, oh, I'm being murdered, are very different puppies. And never trust the promises of a CEO from a former company. Will the premium modules have their online authentication requirements removed so it's all DM free? No. The premium mods will, will still be bound to your account. So they're still premium modules. They're still kind of classified as such. As such, we, we will we'll sell them separately and they'll be treated as premium modules. So somebody's saying it's 2 o'clock. You said a t-shirt. Give me my t-shirt. Or no, not a t-shirt. Uh, collector's edition. Where is that collector's edition? I would like said collector's edition. So if you haven't been paying attention, this is the Seizure Dragon Spirit Collector's Edition. It is a big box 11. It's very slow to open just because of all the mass that's in there. It's a, it's a pretty awesome box. It includes the coin in the front of the book. Includes some really awesome stuff. We're really happy with how it turned out. We made a very limited number of them. We've sold quite a few and uh, we're keeping a few for promotional, but there's not that many left and they are lovely. So after this, there will be one less. So tell me, Dan, who's the winner? The winner is Want. <laughs> You know, many people want the game. It is really small font. I cannot read it. Pink Pummy, this is yours. You now are the proud owner of a Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition Seizure Dragon Spirit Collectors. One of a few people. Inside, 
There is a card that has a number on it. Each copy of this is uniquely numbered. So when they're gone, they're gone. And now you got one. Okay. I sense Phil has jumped in on it. Um, there's a question. Can you fix infinite dungeons? It was far too unbalanced. You know what's something we can look at? I think it's going to come down to... That gets into director's cut kind of territory. <laughs> yeah. And we don't want to break those things. It's One person's unbalanced would be... Uh, can we look into adding additional hot bars? It would be nice to have more available. Now, if I recall correctly, with your quick bar, you also have the controls and you have the shifts. So you've got 36 quick bars. That's quite a few. If, uh, if somebody were to want more than that, I mean, it's plausible. I don't know if we would do it. Control shift alt. You know, there's an extra 12 right there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared of that. Too many key combos. You open the portal to hell, man. Uh, release date for the 2.5 patch when it's done. You know, the, we learned a lot over the years. And one of the big kind of lessons I've learned is when we rush a release, we ship a game with bugs. And I think the right way to do it is... We take our time, we test it, we get feedback from the fans that, yeah, this is a good solid version. Like Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition, we took our time with that. We went through multiple iterations. We had a live group that was helping us test it and verifying that it was good. And we actually had a report from our community saying, this game is good and solid. It's ready for ship. So that's kind of the philosophy we want to take with the 2.5 stuff is let's make sure this is the version we want. And when we've got that version, that's the version we're going to ship. So, uh, Phil, being uh, all DM here, you're going to... Thank you. Okay, we got to take the kid home. Um, I thought we did talk to him, and he was... I think you may have broken him. So, so here... Um, why don't you possess t little, little, uh, I'm, <laughs> I want to call Lomarius. him Timmy now. Yeah. <laughs> Timmy's daddy got eaten. So uh, grab Timmy, teleport him to the, uh, his name is Seven. Wonderful. So Seven, teleport yourself. Oh, he's going to follow us. Okay. Come on there, Jimothy Rando or whoever you are. Let's go back. And get our reward. I believe 500 gold was the amount we agreed on. Can we renegotiate halfway through? Um, <laughs> I think we're going to renegotiate the terms of this deal. I don't trust our DM. I have a feeling we're going to get stiffed. One of the cool things is multiple DMs. Any chance for soft coding the, the GUI? Editins like like Neverwinter 2. So one of the things about Neverwinter is the way that oh it's a dire wolf kicking around. Hey, way. More oh, we found a draw mage. So one of the things about Neverwinter is the UI was pretty hard coded. And because of that, there wasn't a whole lot you could do. We have ideas going forward about how to make this better, but I think right now there's nothing we want to kind of hard commit to. Part of this beta process is exploring the value of features and, and making sure we can make the best game we possibly can. So Tommy's standing here over in the corner still, and there was this a pile fella. of remains. We left him here. That was the other Tommy that I accidentally spawned. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're a DM, be a good DM. Clean up after yourself. Don't leave garbage Tommy's laying around all over the place. I didn't want him killed. I wanted you to evaporate him. I didn't yeah, want to deal with lost. his end. I don't want to be involved in the murder of digital Tommies. Uh, up here left. Okay. Leaving a kid behind. 
Will a Curse of Strad module be possible? You know what? It's never Winter Nights. You can build anything you want. And it's just going to come down to if you can hook up with a group that can make the art content to support it. Definitely something that could be done. Do you want to? They're asking if you can change up. Somebody's, chase somebody's cam. insulting my chase cam. I actually like chase cam. Fine, I will just run it top down. But I'm still going to play as if I was playing chase cam. <laughs> <laughs> Manual chase cam? That's just how I roll, man. Are we going to make a story mode difficulty setting? You know, we've had good luck with those so far. I don't think we made a, an official decision on that. We really kind of talked about it as what what could we possibly do in that? And I think that's something we, again, look at more in content going forward. Because I really, I don't like the idea of, of revisionist history, of just going in and saying, oh, I didn't like the way that was, so I'm just going to change it. I'm just going to rewrite history. Neverwinter and the original campaign, I mean, it was what it was. And it's, oh, I sense Phil has been involved here. Yes. And you and the boy ran off, so. Well, I'm totally running off. Running off and buggering off and running away, brave, brave Sir Robin. Yeah, Neverwinter, they chase you, by the way. Yeah, I know. Transition. Oh, <laughs> I remember back in Neverwinter in the development. So we had this bug where the, the AI was hyper aggressive and actually really, really good at finding you. So I went down into the, into the prison district in the Neverwinter official campaign. Here's the kid. All right. So I went down into the prison district. I made it to the bottom and I fought the boss in the bottom of the dungeon and the boss killed me. So I respawned back into the, uh, into the temple where Arabeth was. And I don't know what, I think it was messing around with my equipment or something. So probably spent about six or seven minutes there. And all of a sudden, the boss from the prison district comes busting in and he starts attacking me in the temple. And I'm like, what the heck? Where did this guy come from? It turned out that he had been on this epic tear of murder as he fought his way up out of the prison out into the out into the main town and then he proceeded to just slaughter every innocent on his way to kill me as quickly as possible so he actually killed me again i respawned again and i finally managed to beat him and kill him with erebus standing right there ready to res me whenever I, whenever i i got over it so we went through and changed the scripting a little bit at that point which shut down um, homicidal maniac pursuit. <laughs> we just turned that off as a feature. Uh, there's a question. What is my favorite Kung Fu movie? Oh, God. Enter the Dragon? That is a really hard... That is a hard, hard... So I gotta be honest. I'm like, I'm not the hugest Kung Fu fan. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I like a lot of the aesthetic styling of Hidden Tiger, Crouching Dragon. And uh, there was another one I watched that was just beautiful. Another thing you should know about me is I'm really bad with remembering the names of anything. People, places, movies. But uh, it was a recent, recent one. And by recent, I mean in the last 10 years because I'm old. And uh, it was just beautiful. It was such a gorgeous movie. Uh, are there plans to make the editor 64-bit? That is a good question. I think our initial plans are just to keep the tool set compiling and to step it forward and to make things kind of better. As far as going to 64-bit, I mean, maybe that can happen down the road. We really have to, we just have to dig in further on that and really make some hard decisions about it. Um, another question is, are we going to work on the AI? So the AI in Neverwinter is all script based. So there's a number of ways that people, that the AI kind of runs its separate scripts. So the default scripts are pretty straightforward. It's pretty, we have essentially like a base AI that wound up actually being written mostly into the heartbeat script. 
So I think in the existing content, unless something comes along, we'll leave it roughly the same. But I think going forward, it's definitely something we can look at for the new content. Um, I'm just getting away from you because I know something bad is coming my way. I'm going to Barbarian Rage because it's the only thing I got. Great. Yay, the Frost Giant is dead. Your end draws nigh. Ha ha ha. I like it when Phil dies. So one of the other questions is in terms of Steam wishlisting, uh, that should be up in the next day or so. Yeah. Uh, now, that being said, you know, buy the game on Beamdog and, you know, Steam will come in time. And we're basically, if you buy it on Beamdog, we're basically giving you a Steam key with that as well. So are we planning to improve the animations or create new ones? Again, I don't think we're going to, improve on this the kind of stock content that's that's there i think it's one of those things we look at marching forward is making new models new characters new animations new weapons i have a real fixation with the weapons trent modeled the original weapons i modeled all the weapons sometime between six o'clock and ten o'clock at night when working on the game it was kind of like therapy, helped keep me from going totally insane during the development. We got another question here. <laughs> the Seeker is angry. Buddy, <laughs> never have Phil as a DM. He literally just starts tearing everything up. Did we at least get the 500 gold? Oh, I got lots of gold. I don't know how I got 89,000 gold, but that's awesome. It's too bad that the only merchant in this module is attacking me right now. So we got another question here is, um, is the editor backwards compatible with project files made in the original editor? Yes. The editor will load the, the dot mods and you can edit them. And honestly, you shouldn't even have to recompile them. You should be able to just load existing modules with the enhanced edition. Yeah, but that being said, if you've made a mod in the past and you want to kind of spruce it up with uh, some extra little things, please do. Well, and, and like one of the things we're kind of looking at as well is that this can be the land of a thousand experiments where people can go and try things. And when really cool things kind of pop out, we can take a look at them and say, wow, we never even thought of going that direction. You know what we could do is we could actually dig in, open up a couple more things, to allow modders to go even further. So that's why I'm so excited about this. Neverwinter is kind of this unique platform and we got the keys to the kingdom. So we can just roll it forward and, and do just amazing things. Uh, we got another question of, will there be PVP? Uh, PVP is an option. You can set it on your server. So right now we're playing multiplayer. We're playing on, on uh, my server here. So what I can do is I can pop up the player list and I can see, I can, I can, these are kind of the actions I can perform. And when I set the game up, I actually set it up. This one was limited PVP. So uh, between parties, you could damage each other, but in party, we wouldn't damage each other. So it's, it's never winner, man. It's your call. You want to run PVP, you run PVP. You want to run PVE only, you can do that. Uh, next question is, how about an official scripting compendium? Um, so Niv back in the day had pretty much most of the documentation on Neverwinter of every form imaginable. And based on that, we've got a lot, a lot of that content still available. And I think going forward, you'll see a lot more appearing kind of on the Neverwinter uh, community. And I, I can't really address how much our advisory board has really added to this whole thing. I mean, my goal with Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition was to get out early and to bring in kind of key influencers who understood what Neverwinter was about and how to make it better. And then to really kind of empower them and put them in direct contact with the dev team. So we brought in, in Niv and, and Liareth and oh, there's a, a ton of people, great 
people who just had so much feedback and helped us set direction. I mean, so much so that we, we wound up hiring Niv to work with us. And uh, I think it's just going to be so exciting going forward that that idea of being a fan of a game and then actually being part of the development team it just offers so much, so much power, so much, I don't know, self-determination, essentially. Next question is, what about the hero of Neverwinter? Personally, I think the hero of Neverwinter was wrongly, undeservingly forgotten. So that was the official campaign. And I think the nature of video game development is you always focus on a few things, sometimes to the detriment of others. One of the big things on Neverwinter, we were so focused on this big package on multiplayer and online persistent worlds and portaling persistent worlds together and the tool set and modability and, and we dropped the ball on the official campaign. It just wasn't that great. As far as the hero being kind of ignored and walked away from, I think we all looked back on the official campaign, at least on the dev team, and we said, you know what? For not knowing what we were doing when we were building it, it's pretty good, but it's not our best work. And we can't, we're not exceptionally proud of it. I think to me, Hordes of the Underdark is probably the best thing about Neverwinter Nights. It's really when we as a development team kind of reached that, that point where we understood the tools, we had expanded our process, we had enhanced the game out and then feature wise, it just allowed us to do so many more things. And I think Hordes is just such a great experience. One of the questions we just got is, uh, do you ever play in any servers that left a lasting impression on you after the original release and what were they? Um, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the Persistent World server that I played on the most because it was literally um, no, 13 years ago, and uh, the memory tends to develop gaps after that period Memory is one of the first things that goes. Anyway, what I do remember, though, is uh, it was sort of your typical Persistent World server. Uh, it had a population of probably about like 70 people uh, with like 20 online at any given time, and it was a lot of fun. I played on there for a few months. So the DMs uh, on there would run events every now and then, little tournaments, or they would run uh, dungeons. And in fact, that's actually where uh, the story of the DM accidentally teleporting everyone into the dungeon came from. But I'll never forget one of the more hilarious things that happened. After one of the DM events, they gave everyone who participated a reward. It was a custom item. And it was a potion, and it was called uh, Mountain Dew Code Red. And uh, it was it was a stupid potion. It, it gave you like ridiculous stats, like it gave you plus fifty to all of your core attributes and massively increased your speed, stuff like that. But it only lasted for ten seconds, so it was sort of this joke item that they didn't intend for anyone to actually use. So everyone drank their Mountain Dew Code Red immediately and ran around like idiots for a little while. And it was a great deal of fun. I, however, hang, hung on to uh, my potion. So two weeks later, in real human time, there was a tournament in uh, the fighting pit. And so they were doing round after round after round, and I was about to face off with a guy. And I was completely geared the wrong way. Like, my character was built stupidly, and it was just, it was a bad time. So this guy's coming out, and he's like, I'm going to kick this guy's butt. It's going to be easy. So I downed my Mountain Dew Code Red right as the fight begins, land an immediate hit on the guy. I did, like, 320 damage which was about four times his hit points. And uh, he was extremely mad and called foul on us, or on <laughs> me. So I maintain that what I did was entirely within uh, the rules. He just didn't have any foresight. So that's why Neverwinter Nights online servers are great. Back to you, Trent. As far as Neverwinter Nights persistent worlds that I played and enjoyed, so I didn't. Number one, or shipped, and uh, I basically became a Luddite for about three months. I just shut down, and I didn't have anything to do with video games. I actually spent the a big portion of that time just sitting in my garage, tearing down my uh, existing race car. 
so that we could, I could rebuild it just because I didn't want anything to do with computers. I had done a whole lot of crunch time leading up to that. Um, when I go back over it, it was basically the first two years were fine. Year three, I started into full time, probably working, I'd say 10 hour days, six days a week. And then the last two years I jacked it up. I was seven days a week. The end result was just exhaustion. And I really just, when Neverwinter shipped, I just wanted to go home and crawl under a, 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 some kind of bed or, or tree trunk or something and just hide out. We shipped the game at, it was like 1.30 in the morning. I went home and I slept for three days. And then when I came back in, we sent half the team home and the other half worked on the first patch. And then after two weeks, we swapped out. And uh, the end result was we got the first patch done fairly quick. And then the team stayed on as kind of a live team. And then uh, we inherited the, uh, the first expansion pack with Floodgate. We did that. And then uh, the second expansion pack, Hordes of the Underdark, which I really, Hordes is awesome. It really was us figuring out everything and actually kind of hitting all the beats to show what we could do. And, and Brent Knowles, who's actually working here at Beamdog, just showed the strength of the scripting language and the, the variety of things he could do. Like you could craft a golem, uh, customize your own weapon. You could control how a siege played out. It was just amazing. So Hordes is part of kind of the core uh, Neverwinter Knights Enhanced. So Neverwinter Enhanced contains Neverwinter, Shadows of Undertide, Hordes of the Underdark, and some of the premium modules that that came out with the game. And then there's the only additional three premiums that are available. Um, I have a question here. Trent, what about Barkskin? Yes, there is a spell that is called Barkskin and it makes your skin kind of look barky. It, uh, I'm not sure what the question <laughs> means. Uh, next question I see here is the tool set for Linux. Again, until set's built in C++ builder, it's probably going to remain Windows only. Yeah, we might be able to make wine play a little better with it. That'll be about it. Um, we've got two more t-shirts to give away. Where are those t-shirts? Uh, somebody ate the t-shirts. So we've got less to give away now. Okay. So uh, the winners the are Grunf66 and Blessed Adversary. Oh, the question is, we hate the bark skin effect. So bark skin is basically one of those hard coded things where it goes in and it does a texture swap, swaps out the player's skin with a bark skin texture. Um, all you got to do is find that bark skin texture and you could replace it with almost anything you wanted if you want to mod it. As far as us going forward in new content, that's an option. It's something we can take a look at. I think one of the big things we've done with the code base is just go through and make it a better citizen in every environment it lives in. So original Neverwinter actually does not play well with Windows. It's saving files in all sorts of directories that Windows doesn't like. So the Enhanced Edition actually fixes up all the permission systems and it stores your save files in your docs directory. So you've actually become a really good Windows citizen. And I think as well, part of that is just being a good citizen under Linux, being a good citizen under Mac. It's Macintosh? Just, yeah. You said Mac? Yeah. Phil, how do you feel about Macintosh support coming back to Neverwinter finally? Macintosh Beyond that OS X support. So Cameron, my business partner, has a Mac, and he spends a lot of time complaining every time we, we get something slightly wrong with the Mac support. So between him and Phil, the other major Mac user in the office, they're definitely stomping it forward. Yeah, so you'll notice that a lot of games, they, they work on Mac, but they're not really good Mac citizens, like um, sliding between desktops doesn't work, or uh, rescaling doesn't work properly, or full screen doesn't work properly. So we're going to take the time um, and make Neverwinter be a good Mac citizen. Um, Neverwinter used to have a Mac client, um, and then there was some changes to the Mac platform, and it's that just was, been yeah, sort of a weird state for the last while. 
So now uh, Neverwinter is all nicely compiled for Mac uh, x86. It's awesome, works natively, and we're just going to keep stepping that forward and making it a good Mac citizen, which I'm very happy about because uh, it runs like a dream. The core game experience runs like a dream on Mac. I have um, a MacBook Pro with one of those awful integrated Intel HD pieces of garbage, and the game runs awesome, which I would hope because it was released in 2003. Even with all of the new features, like the depth of field stuff and all that jazz, it runs great. Um, it's a really fun airplane game, as I've tried in our recent trip. Um, so yeah, good Mac citizen coming your way. Uh, another question is, any chance of portrait packs? So in the premium, in the, uh, the digital deluxe, we've actually included some new portraits. So I think that's one of the things we'll be doing going forward is kind of adding more portrait packs, more options for stuff like that. It's one of the fun things. Um, there's another question here, which is, those who purchase have access to both Windows and Mac version? The answer is yes. So it'll actually be all three, Windows, Mac, and Linux. You'll get, uh, you'll get your CD key. It'll work in whatever platform you want to play it in. So against Phil's advice, I've actually jumped us into Hordes of the Underdark, which Phil assures me will be certain destruction if we try to play it multiplayer. But I, having done this before, I'm not so worried about it. Uh, I just another... joined with a level one character. This is not going to go well. Um, yeah, so you should probably quit and join in with a better character. So <laughs> a level one in Hordes, and I'm, I'm, I'm a ways in here. So... Uh, we got a question here. We mentioned we hired NIV. Does that mean NWNX will get integrated into the core? And will it be compatible with custom NWX plugins? Uh, for those of you who don't know, NWNX is Neverwinter Nights Extender. There is a client and a server side to it. It adds a lot of functionality for persistent worlds. It also adds some client functionality. Uh, we've been working pretty close with NIV and with Learth to move some of that functionality into the core of the game. But there are also kind of portions that don't make sense in the core, so we're going to continue to kind of support NWNX as a as a plug-in platform to that. The Earth's been helping out a ton with that, and as well. Is, I keep mentioning those two names because I'm really shitty with names, and I so apologize to the other people who have been part of our advisory board. They're awesome. Uh, <laughs> next question: Neverwinter Nights Two. Um, Neverwinter Nights 2 is a game made by Obsidian, and uh, right now we have no plans or, or thoughts about that. There's, obviously, it's based on some of the Neverwinter original code, but they've definitely pulled it in a direction. Oh, here's a good question. How many diamonds do I need to buy top open loot boxes? So Neverwinter wasn't ever about loot boxes. And I don't think we're ever going to be doing any kind of loot boxes. We're just going to make the game as is. <laughs> uh, next question. How would you sell this game to me, a dummy who ultimately doesn't understand the technical aspects or graphical aspects? It's a single player RPG and a multiplayer RPG and a persistent world that you can play with your friends and it includes a tool set to be able to build your own content. It's everything the original game was, but it's better. It's going to be more stable, higher resolution, we're going to march the graphics forward. It's just going to be so much better going forward. The game will look sharper, we'll... we'll a platform and it's just going to get better as it goes forward so here i'm running around in hordes of the underdark oh, you're in the yawning portal i am in the yawning portal where okay, are you i went down i'll head back upstairs okay why don't you come upstairs and we'll go out into well i actually just walked down in where you are Let's okay. actually go out into, into Waterdeep proper. So the story of Hordes in the Underdark is set in Waterdeep. The Yawning Portal, Yawning Portal, 
is the uh, inn that we are based in. And oh, I missed the, the right door. I was where I wanted to be, and then I missed the door to the outside world. So the story in Horde starts with the yawning portal. You're wake, you wake up in there as a character. The other thing too, that Neverwinter also has, it also has land game support, which you kind of don't really have that much anymore. It's bring your friends over, play around on some laptops, invite Phil over as your DM. Respect uh, your betters. Wait, what could Phil I would love to be your DM. You wouldn't want Phil to be your DM, but he would love it. Okay, we're going to head out into Waterdeep. Now, as I mentioned, I had been playing this for a while already. If they sneeze on me, I am going to die. Uh, summoned a dire spider. Why do I sense the hand of Phil in this? <laughs> so, Phil DM, uh, why don't you come in here and help us? I hate doing our mages and battle clerics. <laughs> How did that get killed? That's a good point. One of the questions in terms of just hard quick. One of the things that pretty much allowed us to add the extra post processing features is originally when Neverwinter Night shipped, the depth buffer for the 3D effects weren't exposed. But, you know, through the magic of Jason Knipe, we were basically able to expose that so shader writers and developers can pretty much have access to all that depth information. So we were able to add things like depth of field, ambient occlusion, and other effects that we've pretty much been experimenting with over time. Um, sorry, I missed where you were going. Um, I went that away. Okay. There you go. Um, Phil, how'd you like to give Jonathan some XP because he jumped in with a first level character and that is not going to end well for him. It doesn't even begin well for him. Um, somebody said, can we get a shout out for Darkness at Daggerford? Darkness at Daggerford, for those who don't know, is an adventure that was created by Ossian Studios, and uh, Ossian is led by Alan Miranda. Alan Miranda was my producer on Neverwinter Nights, and then he left Bioware after that. I love Alan. I think he's a brilliant human, and I think Darkness at Daggerfoot is pretty awesome. And uh, big shout out to it. Um, any plans to improve dedicated server client with additional admin features? Dude, we got. Niv and Liareth and people poking this thing. They're going to be telling us on a daily basis how we can make it better. And they've already taken steps to make it better. And we also want you to tell us what we need to do to make it better. <laughs> we, have a, we have a rat named Boo <laughs> running with us. He squeaked. I will say greetings, mighty Boo. Only I did it with caps lock on, so it looks elite speaky, which is not good. Okay. I know where we are. So this is my game. I've been playing hordes of the Underdark and... <laughs> I can see that the small boo wishes to go for the eyes. I welcome you as a companion, Boo. Hey, Boo, there's somebody who looks just like you. Is Boo going to make friends? <laughs> Boo is attempting to make friends. Come, Boo. Adventure awaits us. Um, are textures going to be redone or models is a question. Actually, we're not going to go in and redo the art content for the existing content. There's so much content there. When we looked at it, I put together a budget and it involved the GDP of a small nation. Neverwinter is that big. Like when we set out to make Neverwinter, we didn't use Baldur's Gate as the target. 
we actually used Baldur's Gate 2 at the, as the target for content. And that was for the original game. So for Neverwinter original release, we made all the content that Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2 had together. Then we did two expansion packs on top of that, which is an insane amount of content. When we look back at it, it was just impossible to go through and redo that content on a reasonable budget. The other point I'd like to make is our philosophy going forward on this is we don't want to break existing content. And in a lot of cases, modders have used the existing tile set or the existing textures to get the exact look that they wanted. We don't want to interfere with that. So any new content that we will be building will be in parallel to the existing content. We're not going to replace the existing tile sets or, or force you to basically upgrade your tile set. We're going to create new things that you have the option of using in new mods going forward but we don't want to break the existing community. So here we are playing Neverwinter towards the Underdark. Um, we've gotten past the Room of the Four Chains and we found the Flesh Golem Burger. It was created by Halister. And I'm basically telling him, yeah, we found the Four Chains. Um, he's very happy that we beat them up. So he said that Halister's a prisoner, his dad is in the clutches of them dark-skinned, pointy-eared, silver hair, no good drow. Spock. And I asked him if he had a plan to free him. Um, he says, me? No, I could. Oh, no. He just doesn't have a plan. Who would have thought a flesh golem not being the greatest tactician? Community is pretty much the focus of what Neverwinter is, and when we were looking at you know things that we wanted to work on here at Beamdog, Neverwinter has always obviously been close to Trent's heart because you know he was the original project director on it. But we've seen things like the the master server no longer working, and there's hacks that people have had to do to kind of rebuild that community. We have those assets, we have that talent, that passion to bring Neverwinter back and fully support it for the community that pretty much has pretty much been running pretty strong but we want to rebuild that community and bring new users into that base so that there's more stories to tell. And that's one of the things that is super important to us is maintaining and fostering that community around Neverwinter. <laughs> uh, question about the UI graphics. Any chance they will change? The original is somewhat bland, at least compared to BG. Uh, we went through a long process on Baldur's Gate, really kind of thinking about the user interface and, and where it needed to change and where it could change. Again, I think we're looking kind of forward at it. I think there is a way we can evolve the UI going forward that maybe we don't address the historic content, but maybe we address going forward. Uh-oh, under attack already. Just popped into the new area and we're under attack by drow. So I'm actually using an intelligent sword and it likes to talk to me periodically. It's kind of hilarious. It fires off all sorts of voice cues, talking about how it loves the taste of elf blood in the morning. Can you come back up here? I need to tell you. You're getting murdered? Yeah. You take the one at the bottom of the stairs and cross me. Uh, the one? Let's try the five at the bottom. I can zoom up further. So I like it better when I zoom in and I don't see <laughs> You don't see quite the nope. magnitude of thing you're, you're going to be attacked? Here's a question. If somebody told you 15 years ago that there would people, <laughs> there would be people still playing and developing for Neverwinter today, would you have believed it? That would have depended on when in that development cycle I was asked. There was, oh my God, somebody killed Boo. <laughs> there was a, there was times when I thought we were going to change the world. That Neverwinter was the most amazing, biggest project of all time. And uh, there were moments of depression on, on any project that long where we're like, oh God, this game, it's not that great. It's not going to be the best thing ever. We're not, oh God, we're failures. We're faking it. And I think that kind of happens with everybody. But it did change the world. Like we've got programmers here that are in their early 20s that Neverwinter was their first thing that they started to mod or program on. 
and that's what got them into the game. Uh, so it kind of has changed the world. So, in retrospect, I'm glad, but I probably wouldn't have anticipated it. Um, fix the water graphics bug. So the water graphics bug, back in the day, there was um, there was specifically there was a, a very proprietary way of of accessing advanced shader-ish features on on video cards of the day, and one of the things that that you would do is you would actually use um, OpenGL extensions, which were non-standard and which were specific for video cards. So, with regards to the shiny water, it actually was specifically to ATI cards, and then we later did a version for NVIDIA cards, and it was just buggy. It was just, it was not the greatest thing in the world. And there's currently a water fix that Niv uh, has worked on that's actually in our dev build, in our nightly, right now, that, you know, once people pretty much buy the game over at Beamdog, and if you can get into the beta side of things on our Head Start program, you can go in and start testing the new water stuff and giving some feedback on that, because we would appreciate it. Hold your weapons. I mean you no harm. So here I've met Nathira was written by uh, Drew Carpishan. Um, Drew was a long-term writer at Bioware. He was a lead writer on Mass Effect. Um, this was one of the one of the characters that that Drew wrote as part of the project. Can you inspect my character for a second? I can inspect your character. Look at that portrait, fellas. You were near death. That yep. is a new portrait. That is one of the new portraits, and I think I posed for that portrait. A year ago. That's spiffy. Your attack has increased. Jesus. Hi, boys. Phil <laughs> does not like <laughs> idle hands. So I was having a nice talk with Nathira, and then suddenly... She transformed. A Minotaur Brute showed up. I don't have line of sight. Let's continue on. Let's just move forward. Despite the machinations of Phil. But one of the questions that was asked was, is this game available right now? What is available right now is you can pre-order it on Beamdog, which will ultimately unlock a Steam key for you. Or if you want to go through the Steam approach, uh, in the next day or so, you should be able to wishlist it on Steam. And once the game is available, Steam will kindly send you out an email saying, hey, the game let's is go. A, game is available for purchase. Oh my god. When that many people are casting spells, it is time to run away. Running away and buggering off. Oh god. Uh, Phil, anything that you want to sign off I with? I am do we slowed do and I am darkness. I'm going to slide over there, pass this over to Phil. Run away. Run away. <laughs> Hello. So uh, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, watching this stream today and listening to Trent tell stories of the development of Neverwinter and talk a little bit about our plans for Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition going forward. So to summarize for people who didn't watch the total stream, uh, you can buy Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition right now on beamdog.com and we are coming soon to Steam, GOG and a whole bunch of other places. If you buy the game right now, you get access to our Head Start program, which is essentially a beta where we're letting the community guide the development of Neverwinter Nights to sort of tell us what you want to see come out of this game, both from a technical perspective and also what kind of content you'd like to see in the future. And by buy, Phil means pre-order. There you go. So please uh, get the game on Beamdog, or if you prefer Steam, wait a little bit and you'll be able to wishlist it. Um, before we wrap things up today, I think we should A, give away some more t-shirts, and B, talk about the question that got skipped over, which is, of course, what do we think about Spelljammer? Now, <laughs> let's talk about Spelljammer for a little while. Spelljammer is essentially a D&D &D setting that connects all of the uh, disparate you know, Forgotten Realms locations it's together. It's one of the settings that does that. It's like, imagine Planescape if instead of going through some sort of dimensional portal, you just traveled through 
physical space, going through the crystal shield that, of course, uh, protects our entire solar system, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Spelljammer is the greatest of all of the D&D &D settings because it has hippos that wear plate armor and also wield shotguns. And if you don't find that combination of fantasy elements delightful, then I'm sorry, but you are a broken person. I, I think Phil I is a broken you. person. I am, uh, I am much more of a Planescape fan than a Spelljammer fan. What's not to love about it? It's basically like fantasy FTL. In, in the Forgotten Realms. So I F think it's great. FTL is a happy, those are happy three letters to put together. I love FTL. But to me, fantasy is a pure, pure beast. And when you bring rhinos in plate mail with shotgun and ships that fly through space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you break it for me. All good things. You break it for me. I'm glad that you agree that Spelljammer is the best <laughs> setting of all. Let's give away some t-shirts. The first person to win a t-shirt is Futabot. Nice name. And the second person is Jim Bob's Limbob. Very, very clever. Perhaps you can work with Bob Loblaw blah on his law blog. All right. I think we have uh, shown off enough of Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition for today. You guys can uh, stay tuned and uh, look at our wonderful thanks for watching screen for a while. Well, I think, you can watch I think something else. the biggest thing I want to encourage everybody to do is get on the forums, get talking to us. Post up kind of your feature lists that starts the discussion. And what we're discussing is what the game becomes. That's why we were doing this program, why we're doing the whole head start. We've got time. Let's let's make this let's make this into a bigger game. Let's let's go for a bigger opportunity here. With and we're excited about what we can do with it. Be part of it. Help us out. So we'll, uh, we'll be doing more streams in the future. We're going to be playing the game, showing off how easy it is to use the tool set, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, but in the meantime, head over to beamdog.com. You can check out Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, see what we're all about. This is the classic Neverwinter Nights experience presented in the best possible way. It works with all of the classic mods. It's going to get better and better. We're coming out with some awesome Steam features that I know you guys are really, really looking forward to. So please come and join us as we step this beta forward. And we will be listening quite deeply to your feedback because Neverwinter Nights exists today not because of the work that we have done or the work that Trent has done, but rather the work that the community has done by keeping it alive, staying together. Um, I was really happy to see in the chat room in Twitch before the stream started, it was like a reunion of, you know, old school Neverwinter Nights people who haven't seen each other in years. Uh, it's really great to see the community get back together, and we're very, very eager to step that forward. And one of the things, I mean, I want to call out as well is if you've come here and you, you don't know what the enhanced editions are, take a look at the Baldur's Gate enhanced edition, BG2, Icewind Dale, Planescape Torment. These are beloved old games that we've taken and made run well on current platforms. We've added functionality and, and user interface really kind of points to similar direction to what we want to do with Neverwinter only Neverwinter because of the tools and because of the multiplayer, especially the, the almost like, friend MMO scale that it can do. There's just so much potential here. And we're so anxious to dig into it and do some awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. And we will chat with you more in the future. In the meantime, head over to Beamdog and check out Neverwinter Nights or the other enhanced editions. And we will see you again soon. See you later. Take care, everybody.